You've started the second video regarding Edpuzzle training. This is, you've logged into Edpuzzle and this is a screen it opens up with. As you can see, first they want you to make sure students have joined your class. I'm just going to click off to the side and I want to look at what we have here. Here across the top row you have your search option, your My Content, this is the videos you've created in the past, and then My Classes. Currently we're looking at the My Classes. Here in the My Classes, we have three parts, Members, Assignments, and Gradebooks. Right now, we're here at Assignments. The previous video uh, that I've done regarding rules and procedures is listed here as an assignment. I can sit there and make a due date. I found that to be a problem because often I've got a student or two that is absent for one reason or another, and when I set the due date, what that, once that due date has come and gone, then they can't access it. So I rarely use the due date. Completed tells me the percentage or the, of students that have completed this assignment. Very helpful. But I can also click there and look at more details and we'll try to pull that up here during class. Over here, no progress, but then share. And this is where I can share the assignment and it'll give me a link or an embedded code so I can sit there and put it on a website. A lot of different ways you can do it. You can even post it here on Facebook or Twitter, email it. So Google Hangouts, all of this is very useful. Off here to the side, we can click on Add a Class, Import from Classroom, Google Classroom. I find this the easiest way for me to set up students in my Edpuzzle classes is just import it from Google Classroom. Some of you have not used Google Classroom uh, at Temple High School. Y'all use a different program called Schoolology. I find Google Classroom very helpful. The, the neat thing about Google Classroom, you can quickly enroll students in it just by having a code like what we did when you first came to this class. I posted it up there on the projector and or the whiteboard. All you had to do was open up Google Classroom, type in the code, and now you're in it. You may not want to use Google Classroom every day, but if nothing else, just getting them enrolled into your Edpuzzle, Google Classroom is an excellent way to do it. So you may only use it once or twice. The other thing is, when I get new students that suddenly come to my class in the middle of the year, I can have them go through those steps of enrolling in Google Classroom, and then I can again import from Google Classroom to bring more students in. The downside is if I have a student that leaves, then I have to go in there and remove the student, and I can do that here in Edpuzzle. By clicking here on Members, it would show the members, and then I can actually go in there and delete it. Now. The other downside using Google Classroom and with the Edpuzzle, how they set it up, is the students are listed here by first name first. And that can be a little bit of a challenge when you're trying to put grades into your gradebook. If you're willing to take the time, you can go in there and ch change their names so that you might have the class period first, then their last name, and then their first name, just so that it's easier to put it in your gradebook. That's what I would recommend. Another part I want to mention here in the assignments, I've gone back, is if you look right here by the assignment, you can watch it as a student so you can review or see it the way they see it, but you can also allow or not allow skipping. Now this is really helpful because if you allow skipping, then they can move without answering any questions you've put in there. They literally can skip over the questions and the comments. Whereas if you put, click on there, no skipping, then they have to answer, they have to pause and answer, put something in for an answer on the question. I've had students that put in IDK for I don't know but they had to put something there before they could move on through the video. And then you can delete it. Now that you've completed 
the information regarding assignments. Go ahead and stop this video and you've completed video two regarding Edpuzzle training. You may go ahead and start video three now. Thank you.